Well, uh, everybody, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar today on how to protect your business. Uh, we're really excited to have you guys here. Uh, before we get started, just want to sort of, you know, do a couple of housekeeping um, items. Uh, you know, number one, uh, please, you know, check out our website, uh, trustme.ai. And in particular, if you go to trustme.ai slash webinar, you'll find uh, recordings for today's webinar, as well as past webinars, and calendar for our future webinars, including our webinar next, uh, coming up in, in about two Tuesdays on enterprise risk with uh, Ganesh and Joseph from our team. Um, but that being said, you know, we have a lot of resources available for uh, companies of all sizes, including blogs um, and our tools ourselves. Uh, Miro will be talking about some of the specific things we have uh, during our session today. Um, but, you know, today, really, what we want to do is really kick off a series um, to really come up with practical uh, security items for uh, SMBs and really businesses of all uh, sizes. So, you know, today we're really excited to have uh, two members from our executive team to come and sort of share their perspectives about uh, security. Uh, Mir is our CTO, and he comes from a really established background of companies like LinkedIn and Pulse Secure, where he's um, led a lot of teams in engineering, DevOps, and, uh, and, uh, and engineering. Um, Ganesh is our chief product officer, and uh, similar to Mir, he has a lot of wealth of experience. Um, uh, companies uh, like uh, Avocado, uh, Tenable, Acurix, and and now uh, here with um, with uh, Trust Me. So with that being said, let me turn it over to Mir and Ganesh, and they'll sort of walk you through uh, sort of how you can protect your business. Thank you, Larry. Uh, so welcome everyone. So uh, just a couple of a uh, uh, few items to go over about the webinar today. Who is this webinar for? Um, I mean, we we have we have marketed it as the uh, webinar, you know, for you to understand the cybersecurity related issues that impacts the small, medium sized businesses. But but in general, though, it is um, it is a common problem for all of the companies out there. Um, and you know, we are trying to to uh, touch on the common issues that impact the companies and the and the people, and and make sure that you know uh, we share some of the uh, tips that you know how you can manage those risks uh, in your company when you are when you are um, you know thinking about cybersecurity and in security in general. Uh, next, please. So uh, this is a quote from uh, Gary Gensler, you know, security uh, chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission. You know, I don't want to go over the quote fully, but you know, basically what he's saying is that you know cybersecurity is the number one problem for most of the companies out there, and it is becoming you know, more and more prominent issue that the, the C-suites and the owners of the companies are required to look into. Recently, there were, um, you know, several breaches, but main thing is that, you know, there's also some laws which have been passed where the owners have to disclose of the data breaches, disclose about the security incidents and all of those things. So it becomes important for all of us to be aware of, you know, what are the, how the, how the uh, cybersecurity landscape is changing, and and what the legal ramifications are. Um, the funny thing is that, you know, um, uh, even though SEC is, you know, one of the foremost uh, government entity on the security side, even their Twitter uh, handle got hacked, you know, last week or so. So, which which kind of like highlights the the importance. Of not only preaching the cybersecurity but also practicing it on a daily basis. Um, um, next slide, please. So what we are going to do is we are going to start, you know, with some basics on the cybersecurity and you know uh, the how those things are playing in our everyday role at the at the companies. Next. Um, so the main thing that I want to talk about. Uh, there are two things that we want to we are going to discuss today in terms of the item that you should keep in mind. First is the threat actor. So what is the threat actor? Threat actors is an organization or entity that can come and disrupt your network, disrupt your um, computer operations, or many other things. They can try to steal your credit card information, you know, uh, customer data, and whatnot. Usually threat actors are two types. External actors, which are typical cyber criminals, who you know who may try to come over the internet, you know, and try to get your data, 
um, they're like script kiddies who are really, really curious on how things work. And then they try to download some scripts and then they try to, you know, hack into systems. Then there are hacktivists and the nation states, you know, which are, which are, you know, operate at a much higher and larger scale, you know, with targeted, um, targeted organizations and entities. And, but the other thing is that, you know, that you should be aware of is the internal actors. Just like the external actors, internal actors can be also very, very disruptive. You know, it could be one of your employees. It could be the employees, you know, who have been moonlighting and downloaded something from other companies. Um, you know, incompetence also plays a role. You know, if you, you know, for example, you know, as far as the physical security goes, you know, you may have a lock on your door, but if you don't lock it and leave the door open, then, you know, the lock makes no good. So we have to be, we have to be aware of those things. And sometimes inexperience also plays a role. So the attack vector, that's the other thing that I want to talk about quickly, uh, is the attack vectors. What is the attack vector? Attack vector is basically the surface area, um, you know, where somebody can, you know, one of the uh, threat actors uh, can take the advantage of and then, you know, try to hack into your systems. Again, you know, the there are two types, you know, usually the externals and the internal vectors where somebody can take advantage of the situation. Most common is, you know, or one of the most common is the phishing and ransomware, where the external uh, threat actors can send you email or, you know, uh, and try to have you click you, click on something and download some malware or other stuff. Then there's the man in the middle attack. Um, man in the middle attacks usually happens when somebody's trying to sniff the packets in the network and then try to, you know, capture your credentials or some other things and uh, 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 then try to exploit it. This is typically happens, you know, when you are in a public network like you know Starbucks or some of, some other coffee shop, and may not be taking you know, advantage of VPN or the other protective measures that you should be taking. DDoS attacks are usually you know uh, launched against a company system to to make sure that the other uh, customers cannot get to the system. And the basically DDoS stands for, you know, distributed denial of service attack. So it basically uh, denies the services to be rendered to your actual customer. And that means that in loss of loss of revenue, loss of reputation and in whatnot. So there is something also to be something to be aware of. Credential stuffing is very, very common. And and basically, what happens is that you know somebody may have gotten hold of a trove of username and password from a previous data breach from another company, and now they may be trying to uh, log into your system using the same credential. And there is a method of the madness for doing that. And the main thing is that you know we are we human beings are you know a creature of habits. So usually what we do is we may be using the same username or password in many different uh, places. So if one company gets breached, then there's a very likelihood that, you know, uh, if you were part of that company's customer base, your ID and password somebody may be using to log into your bank, to your, you know, uh, other uh, organizations that you may have account with. Um, so that is very important to, to know. And we will talk a little bit about credential stuffing uh, in, the, in the later slides. Also on the internal vectors, again, you know, we have may have the employees, you know, the development practices which are there and the compromised resources if we are not patching those resources properly. Next. Let's take a look at the top eight cybersecurity issues as it is published by CISA, a government entity for the, um, for the securities. So the first one, you know, uh, although this is not in, in, a, in a specific order, but you know the weak password always comes up first, in the sense that you know this is you know one of the the most uh, common vulnerabilities that is out there uh, that gets exploited on a regular basis. Um, Ganesh, you are here, right? So can, how, can you make a guess? You know what is the most common password out there on the internet today? Yeah, I think this is a common issue across all enterprise. And, you know, most like common password, like, you know, first come is one, two, three, four, five, six, and password. Um, some people also use, uh, you know, uh, replace like, oh, with zero. 
Uh, another one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the common uh, use password. And if you are an engineering environment, then you might see test one, two, three, or test at one, two, three, those kind of a password. So these are very common uh, weak password that people still use. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah, actually, you are right. The, the, the top most one is one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, so... Uh, again, as I was talking about us human beings being being creature of habits, you know, we and also a creature of comfort, I would say, you know, we 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 tend to uh, go towards the comfort most of the time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, easy to easy to remember. You know, I don't have to write down anywhere, right? You know, um, and you know that is a vector, or that is a a thing that the attackers are always exploiting. And that is also called social engineering. That in how to how to take the advantage of the human weaknesses and um, gain access where somebody is not supposed to gain the access. So something to be something to be aware of that you know as we the cybersecurity professionals are uh, or the even the you know business owners that are thinking of the security, we need to keep that in mind. And then the second thing that you know I, I put out here is the unsecured Wi-Fi networks. This is not just to for you to give Wi-Fi access to the to the customers who are probably coming to your businesses, but also when you as a individual going outside, you know, maybe to a coffee shop, just like I mentioned, or another place, you know, where there is an open Wi-Fi network, making sure that you know it is very cr uh, critical that you know you take care um, of of the of the uh, you know unsecured Wi-Fi networks and make sure that you are using VPN. Or other mechanisms in a, you know when you are connected to the Wi-Fi network, to so that you know you are not getting compromised. Phishing attack is very common, uh, and, and employees falling victim to phishing emails and social engineering attacks is happening all the time. And we will talk a little bit about it, you know, in a, in a later slides. And and then lack of employee training is also super super important. You know, the uh, bringing up the awareness to your employees and helping them to understand why security is important, why the cybersecurity is such a big deal these days is in a super, super critical. But how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna make that awareness? You know, you need to do some training. You need to hold some sessions and all those things. But not all of us are the super uh, experts on this. And that's where the trust me can also help. And we will talk a little bit about that in a, in a later slide as well. Next. If a couple of other things that I want to quickly highlight is the outdated software and systems, right? You know, you know, we all all have Windows, Mac, and you know whatnot. Making sure that they, you know they are all patched properly and you know is running up to up to date software is super important because you know whenever there is a vulnerability in the software in the other systems um, that the attackers are trying to take advantage of, they won't be able to do it if you have kept your system systems up to date, right? So, so this is super important, you know, to to keep in mind, you know, not only for yourself but also for your whole organization. And and the other thing is the malware protection. You know, just like phishing, malware, they they go hand in hand. And you know, having having adequate you know, protections in the network in in your in your computer systems uh, is is important. And you know, making sure that uh, softwares are all up to date, virus protection is up to date. And you are running regular scans to make sure that you know there is no um, uh, harmful uh, element that sneaked in. The other uh, important but often overlooked item in cybersecurity is the data backup. Insufficient data backups is actually you know one of the main reasons why uh, businesses go go belly up, and the reason is that you know when they are getting attacked by phishing or malware. You know, um, either they have to cough up a huge sum of money, or you know, restore their system from a backup. And if they don't have a backup, they probably you know will have to cough up a lot of money and go, you know, bankrupt. So, if you have backup, if you have nightly backups, if you have you know hourly backups and all those things of your critical business systems, then it becomes much easier to get back on feet. You know, after an attack of malware or phishing. No firewall protection. This is this is something actually, um, you know, super important and again, you know, often overlooked. You know, sometimes you know businesses may get a um, you know a business line 
from Comcast or some other provider, but they may not actually have a full uh, firewall protection. You know that that would you know help them to uh, protect their network, and you know having that can help to thwart a lot of the um, lot of the attack that that can happen to your network and to the business. Next. So, there, as you can see, that there are a lot of things to discuss in the in the cybersecurity uh, arena. But we want to talk a little bit more deeper about the phishing scam, because that is one of the most concern, biggest concern for the for the businesses. Not only for the small ones, medium businesses and the large businesses. And this is happening, you know, all the time. Next, so a couple of statistics. You know, and and these are pretty eye popping statistics. You know, when I when I, when I was researching it and you know putting it all there, you know, I thought that oh my goodness, three point four billion malicious emails are being sent every day. You know, so that is that's a huge number. Just imagine the resources and all those things going behind uh, sending, receiving, and um, in in those attacks. Thirty six percent of all data breaches involve phishing. So phishing is you know one of the most prominent you know. Uh, cause of data breaches that's happening, you know, out in the world, and you know, something for us, all of us, to know and make sure that you know we are getting protected against it. Seventeen point eight percent average click rate of phishing campaigns. What it means that that um, when when people are receiving the phishing uh, emails, people are actually going and clicking on the on the link, and that initiates the the download of ransomware, malware, and in you know, a lot of bad stuff. Uh, or um, it may be asking them to provide a, a credential. They may go to a fake website and then provide their credentials, you know, for their bank account or something else. It is it is super important to know that you know when you are not sure of the email that you have received, uh, if it is valid or not, don't click it. Don't click it. Um, and if you need to uh, get some help, you know, you, you ask the IT admin or somebody to to help you with that. And 66% of all breaches are caused by spear phishing campaigns. And we'll talk about the spear phishing in a little bit. But that, that is a huge number. And uh, as you can see that, you know, the phishing plays a huge role on, these, uh, on, the, on the cybersecurity uh, landscape. And, and of course, you know, the, the SMBs, you know, who most of the time do not have like an IT administrator, do not have security personnel, do not have a security team, they take the brunt of it, you know, most of the time, and 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 their losses are way more proportionately higher than a well-equipped uh, company, larger company, who may have um, the resources to fight those things. So it is important for all of us to understand and take precautions. You know, just because you know we're in a small business or or medium-sized business, you know, it doesn't mean that you know you cannot protect yourself. You can. And we'll talk a few few of those things, you know, um, in the later slides. So before we go into that, you know, let me just give a little bit of overview, you know, how the phishing happens, right? So that you are aware of, you know, what to look out for. So first, the phishing, the normal phishing, it is sent to large number of users, usually with an urgent message or fear factor like, hey, you owe us money, this is from IRS, you know, you need to uh, send this money to you know this Zelle account or something, and you know it will it will try to kind of like you know make you afraid of the situation and then you know take some action. But you know you have to know that you know usually not usually most of the time the companies will not uh, will not try to get the money this way. Even if you owe some money, you know you would need to just call them directly and you know find out you know if that is really the case. Do not click on the link. Just like I mentioned before, do not click on the link um, to or respond to the email. Whenever you're responding, they get a lot of information out of you. When you click on the link, you they get a lot of information out of you, and it's super, very, 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 very important and critical to understand that uh, first level of protection for phishing is you yourself. You know, don't click the link. Okay. The next one, which is also super important, and this has this is even even more interesting because it's called spear phishing. Spear phishing happens when you get an email with very very customized information. Like for example, you may say, "Hey, Mir, 
Um, your Best Buy account has expired. Click here to uh, update the, the account information, right? And that would, and, and when I'm reading the email, I can see the, oh, it's addressed to me. You know, oh yeah, my, it, it shows on the, on the two side, two box that it is my name. And okay, so, but still, it's just peer phishing, right? You know, it, it may look very, very authentic. It may look like that and it came from Best Buy, but it is not. And that's where the ingenuity comes in from this attacker, that they are trying to customize the message. They're making it personal. And they are making it very, very uh, harder for you to understand that, you know, if it is a phishing or not. And then, you know, try to get you to click on the link or provide you some credentials or something else. Um, and with the, with the advent of AI, this is even becoming even more and more critically important because now the AI can generate, you know, some of these, these targeted phishing campaign and, and then uh, send in the mail. So super important for us to understand that, you know, what, where we can get attacked from and you know, what are the things that we can do. Next. Let. Okay, so a couple of other, uh, um, you know, phishing techniques, which are not super common, but nevertheless, something important for you to know, whaling. So whaling is, uh, is also phishing, but it will appear that, you know, the message is coming from one of your owner, executives or something in the company. And it will say, oh, Mir, can you do this X, Y, Z? Uh, go here or send this money or do this contract, something like that. And you'll say, oh, wait, you know, it came from my CEO. Oh, it must be important. Uh, I need to take care of this, right? Always verify with the, with the person who is sending that, you know, hey, did you really ask this? Or was this a phishing, right? So make sure that, you know, you are um, on the lookout for that. Smishing and phishing, these are, these are some new type of uh, uh, phishing campaigns. They're SMS based. So they will send you an SMS, very, very personalized SMS. May say that, okay, Mir, um, you know, do you have time? Can you, uh, can you call me? Or can you, can you uh, please, you know, check this website? And then it will be signed by a person that you know already. You know, it may say, and it make like I I received something like that. You know, from my my you know uh, boss. You know, Yunus, and saying that, oh, Mir, can you please do this? You know, and says Yunus, I'm like this doesn't sound right. So I have to call him up and figure out that you know, okay, if it was him or it was a uh, smishing. So be on the lookout for that. You know, you will get messages like, oh, this is from IRS. You know, can you do this? Can you send a send a hundred dollars? to this account or something like that. Um, and then the last one is the baiting. It may, you may get a mail and say that, okay, you know, you can, you are going to get $1,000. Uh, you have own, uh, you, you have won uh, $1,000 from this lottery or something. And, you know, we are ready to give you this money, but you need to send $5 or $10 to this account. Um, don't fall for that. Those are, those are all scams and, you know, phishing that, that you should be aware of. Okay, so now we are, we are going to uh, talk a little bit about prevention and protection. And Ganesh, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Mir. Um, so Mir explained about like how phishing attack happens, but how do you prevent and protect those from this threat, right? First and foremost, you have to train your employees on common security practices such as using strong passwords or updating software, think before you even click the suspicious link. This is important because as Mir mentioned, right? You yourself is responsible for, uh, as a first defense of attack, right? So you have to make sure like you give advocate training to your employees. Email adequate training um, to use the proper format, greetings, introductions, and cautions with like a reply all type of messages. Uh, double check your attachment that you know you're receiving through the emails. How do you identify suspicious emails that may cause a ransomware or you know phishing type of attack? Right. So another thing is a password. Password. As we mentioned, right, a lot of uh, enterprise still use a standard or default password. It is our, you know, day-to-day -day activity. And a lot of people, uh, since they're using the standard password, your system may get hacked, right? So 
you want to educate your employees to use strong passwords and implement two-factor authentications or multi-factor authentication. So that's very important. Another area is email sanitization. It can be achieved by good email filtering or protection mechanism. Or uh, you can also leverage email providers filtering capability, whether it's a Microsoft or Google, you can leverage those capability. Also, uh, you know, you can use uh, uh, like how Trust Me provide a fish a defender solution that can help you to spot the issues with filtering capability, and it is driven by AI. Um, you, you can also use solution like Trust Me all in one CISO as a platform for vulnerability detection with continuous monitoring. This is important. Our platform has built-in security scanners, which can detect vulnerability with third-party libraries, software code, and we also provide dynamic application analysis. Once you detect any vulnerability, you can get actionable insight to fix those issues. And we provide holistic report into security and risk, where our platform also support insider threats. Just imagine, right, if you have hackers, they're trying to get into your critical asset or trying to uh, reach out to critical server, and they want to exfiltrate data. The way they do it is they can use the combination or script of uh, different username and passwords where we can detect those anomalies and take mitigation action to shut down that access for that particular IP address. So these are very important for uh, small businesses because once you get hacked, you may go out of business. So you have to be very careful. And that's why we are you know, encouraging uh, customers to you know, get familiar with the security, cyber security, as well as there are some uh, uh, training available that, you know, uh, uh, PASME can offer you. And uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So as I mentioned, like we have uh, intensive training program for small to mid-sized uh, uh, businesses, and not just for small to mid sized any enterprise can use this training uh, mechanism. We can provide uh, how to mitigate, how to protect phishing and ransomware, where you can learn the detail about like phishing uh, examples, how uh, you know your URL is different or your message itself is uh, impersonated, right? So that kind of information we can, uh, uh, we can give you. And you can also learn some of the cryptography uh, uh, with that uh, uh, phishing and ransomware uh, area. But more importantly, you want to protect yourself also as well as company so that you know you can create awareness within your employees about phishing you know as me keep on saying don't click that link right that is like you know each and every employees can add up that capability so that you know you can be better off uh, another area is Wi-Fi security. Whether you're using Wi-Fi for your small business or big enterprise, it doesn't matter how you implement security, whether you implement uh, wired equivalent privacy, WEP, or Wi-Fi protected uh, 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 access uh, protocols, right? Changing default passwords and so on and so forth, right? So basic security, uh, that you needed, we will provide that more details into it. And also make sure when you create like a guest network, how do you create the password? Uh, what are the security measures you are taking? Those all things will be covered as a part of um, our offering, training offering. Um, another area we, uh, I think uh, Mir also touched base is backup and restore. This is very important because as a small business, your whole IP is rely on your success of your business, right? So in order to defend the business continuity, you have to take backup. This is very important because if ransomware or some attack happens, your data is still you can access, right? Without you paying ransomware to uh, some uh, third party entity or hackers. 
right? So we will teach you all about uh, backup, restore, what are the tools available, how you can, you know, protect your financial uh, data as well as your IP related information. So that we will provide information. And last but not least, all about password, right? Uh, we talk about in length about password, but it's very important to have like a strong passwords. And, you know, if uh, your employees does need like a, a specific files access, then you can implement role-based access, right? So password plays very important role, based access plays an important role. Uh, password manager, uh, multi-factor authentication. How do you uh, basically manage your password? You can do password rotation, um, credential stuffing that uh, we'll talk about, uh, you know, somebody can take your username and password and you may use the same username and password in future and they can try it out and they can actually get into your system and they can exfiltrate the data. So these are the things, very important uh, uh, areas that we will cover as part of our training. Uh, that way you, uh, you are more uh, 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 educated on this. Next slide. Another area, uh, what Trust Me can help you is we have, um, wide close uh, CISO platform services, which is economically uh, economically priced in the sense like we have all, as I mentioned earlier, all security scanners and all tool set in one platform where you don't want to, uh, you don't have to buy additional tool set to, uh, you know, detect your vulnerabilities or security with your software or network security, right? So it is all integrated platform which can provide you more detail about security issues. Uh, we will also have a demos that will be available for you guys. And we will provide training, as I mentioned, right? If you want to sign up for training courses, uh, that's the link you can click and you know you can register for a training program. And if you want any additional information, you can contact sales at trustme.ai and we will help you out. Um, this is the, uh, uh, like, uh, there are a lot of resources available for small to mid-sized uh, uh, businesses. And, you know, uh, government itself is helping uh, those businesses to uh, have, like, awareness of uh, cybersecurity, right? FCC itself is providing a lot of, like, material. There are some global cyber alliance. Uh, uh, they have the toolkit that gives basic information about how to use password, how to protect your data, and so on and so forth, right? Um, if you look at, like, a FICO also or U.S. Chamber of Commerce also, they are also focusing more on how you know, those small businesses can be uh, educated with this cybersecurity information. Cybersecurity uh, or cyber attacks, uh, they will keep on uh, coming. And it it's happening both in public as well as private sectors, right? And those attacks need coordination or uh, coordinated action. So if you create a, like a knowledge base, if you share the knowledge uh, that you know government is uh, proposing, then that helps everyone. Suppose if you have like a zero day attack vulnerability, that vulnerability can be fixed if somebody you know share that information, right? So that way everybody will get benefit out of it. Um, another area like you know basic uh, tips for small businesses train your employees on security principle it's very important take some time and you know educate your employees protect your information your asset your computer your networks um, and then you know uh, create a plan backup uh, uh, your databases, um, secure your Wi-Fi, and so on and so forth. So these are the basic things that you can achieve to protect your network, protect your business. Right. Well, th thank you, Ganesh and Mir. Um, just a couple of questions, I think, from, from the audience. Uh, first was, uh, can you elaborate a bit more about uh, what Trust Me does in terms of anti-phishing capabilities? Um, yeah. So what, what we're doing is that, you know, we are getting started on the anti-phishing uh, and, you know, integrating with our product. 
Um, and healthy fishing is a is a big problem. Uh, we're also, um, you know, starting a a you know free scanning service. So let's say that you know you are not, uh, you are part of a small business or medium sized business, and you do not have all the resources to to do the scanning and all the things. If you have a if you have received a message that you are not sure uh, if it's a fish or not. You can send it to us. You can forward the message. We can we can check the header. We can we can analyze the body of the message. Uh, we have a database, uh, you know, uh, run by our LLM large language model AI chatbot, which which can which can actually detect the most of the fish, and then it can tell you that you know oh, this this looks like a fishing attempt. You know, don't do anything. Um, so yeah, so we will be launching that you know very soon. Right. And um, in terms of like, you know, the trust me CISO solution, like, you know, wh why should someone use this solution? Yeah, I, I can take that. So uh, trust me, as I mentioned earlier, we have all in one CISO platform uh, where, you know, we have all sets of tools and components, including application security scanners, aggregator, integrators. So what, what it does is it basically lowers the cost of having like complete set of tools uh, that you can use uh, compared to, you know, if you want to do some scanning for different, different uh, software or whether you're doing uh, SaaS or DAS or different uh, products, right? You need to buy those multiple products. But with our solution, all packages are built in. And also, uh, with our solution, it's like uh, nominal efforts, uh, skills for uh, understanding of those tools, how to use it, easy for, uh, easy to adapt and easy to uh, work with. And we provide holistic visibility uh, with continuous monitoring into your IT security and risk ecosystem. So all in all, we can provide you security and risk inside where you can take actionable uh, 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 mitigation actions on that. Okay. And I mean, for for companies that are interested in this, uh, trust me, CISO solution, do they need a CISO? Do they need a security team to be able to implement it and, and use it? No, no, not really. If you, you know, our solution, our CISO platform can help or can enable you uh, without having like a knowledgeable security team, because as I mentioned, it's easy to use platform and it it will give you more information about security, uh, mitigation action, as well as risk so that you can leverage that information to protect your network, protect your environment. And not only that, we can also provide compliance report, which you can uh, use it for your SEC compliance or uh, you can use uh, for your uh, risk uh, strategy uh, 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 session. Great. Right. Great. Right. Well, again, uh, thank you, Amir and uh, Ganesh, for, for uh, going over um, this uh, these tips for, for uh, security. Um, just to let everybody know, our next webinar will be in about two weeks on Tuesday, January 30th. Uh, Joseph and Ganesh uh, will be back to sort of talk a little bit more about what enterprise risk is. Uh, but in general, uh, you know, recommend you guys, uh, oops, recommend you guys, uh, you know, take advantage of sort of some of the things we talked about. So, you know, number one, you know, use this free phishing email scan service uh, by emailing info at fishdefender.net. Uh, we'll scan it for free and, and let you know if there's any risks. Uh, two is, you know, sign up for our intensive Trust Me Security training for SMBs. Um, there's a form there. You can scan the QR code on the right. And lastly, you know, you can visit our website at trustme.ai slash CISO, and this will help you uh, deploy and implement cybersecurity tools without, you know, breaking the bank. Um, but in general, you know, if you have any uh, questions, please feel free to email us at contact at trustme.ai. And really recommend you guys follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, you'll hear more about events like this. Uh, but Again, uh, thank you all for joining. And Ganesh and Mir, thank you so much for, for driving the conversation. Thank you, Larry, and thank you, everyone, for thank joining. You.